The 401k is the most popular retirement account for career professionals. And like everything that starts with good intentions, the 401k retirement plan started with good intentions, but that may not necessarily still be the case. You see, in most cases, the fox is managing the hen house in that those that you've entrusted to manage it for you are really eating up your earnings and fees. And this is something that you really need to be aware of. So you need to learn how to use the 401k system and not let that system use you. So that, that's why in this video, I want to share with you uh, what you should know about the 401k um, as a career professional that's working for an employer uh, and has the 401k available for you. You see, in this video, you're going to learn what to watch out for and be aware of in the 401k retirement account. My name is Yvonne and the goal in this channel is personal growth and development. So if you want to improve the quality of your life and level up, click the subscribe button. You know, several studies show that, the, that most Americans aren't saving enough money for their retirement years. And uh, actually, according to the Trans American Center for Retirement Studies, uh, part of the problem is a lack of financial understanding and education. And as a personal finance and wealth coach, I've learned that there are two types of people. The person that eh, just wants to follow what everyone else does, doesn't question the status quo, doesn't use critical thinking, and just wants to be told what to do. Just tell me what to do and I'll do it. That type of uh, person. Well, that's the average person. You see, the average person is a tell me what to do culture um, that picks one side, right? Um, of the conversation and spends most of their time defending that one side. Um, they have maybe more of a shallow one-sided perspective. And the reason why I say shallow is because they easily trust what someone is telling them without doing too much research on their own. Okay. They uh, take the, the word expert and run with it. Uh, instead of uh, using their own power, feeling empowered, and doing their own research. Even this video that I'm sharing with you today, I want you to um, take what I'm saying as the beginning of your reflection and awareness of the 401k, but do your own due diligence and do your own research. Um, this is just a very short video that just poses uh, a perspective and a thought. Um, it's up to you to take it and do your own research. And that's from this video and every other video out there and every other perspective. Okay. You want to look at things in different perspectives to come to a conclusion with the depth and the breadth of information armed with that, then you're able to make the best decision for your life. But see, the average person doesn't do that. They follow um, the crowd, right? Because they trust that uh, if everyone is doing it, then it must be right. <laughs> That's why the average person gets average results in their life and in their finances. Now, the second group of people Okay, are those that are actually proactive and want to learn. They invest in their financial literacy and they ask questions. They look at all sides of the conversation to get greater perspective. Then they go out there and do their own research, the depth, right? So the breadth is they listen to a perspective, uh, Thank you very much. But then they go ahead and have conversations and listen to all sides of the conversation, different perspectives, different people, different backgrounds to get the breath. And then they do their own research, not just with the, the mainstream stuff that, um, that everyone has access to, but no, the alternative uh, information, the depth right? They do their research. They don't, they don't just look at the first page of Google. <laughs> they go to the second, third, and fourth pages, right? The stuff that's really suppressed. They'll go in there. They'll take the red pill, if you will, uh, because they really want to understand the truth, okay? And so they get out of their comfort zone 
and they don't follow the status quo. In fact, whenever they see the masses or the people, the large uh, group, the average people go one way, they purposely go the opposite direction because, uh, because they know chances are that's more than likely the right way to go. Um, and it's funny how things work that the latter are, is the group that I typically attract. Okay, uh, because we do our research, we look at different perspectives. Okay, and um, you know we're the lions, not the sheep here. So these are the successful people. Okay, that get extraordinary results in their life and in their finances. Okay, do you see the average person gets financial advice, but the successful person gets financially educated. I'm going to say that again, that's important. The average person gets financial advice, but the successful person gets financially educated. They get the financial literacy because they want to feel empowered and they know that ultimately they're the ones that are making the decisions, the best decisions for their life. Okay. Whereas the others, the, the average person just wants the advice. Just tell me what to do. Right. They'll take it, run with it, and then they'll spend the rest of their life, uh, or the majority of it at least, um, trying to defend it, okay? So what do we want to do here? We want to be in the successful group because the successful in, um, invest in themselves first, right? And that's why, okay, they're in the driver's seat. You can't become wealthy in ignorance you simply cannot become wealthy in ignorance. And when I say wealthy, I don't just mean in finances in this case, I mean in everything in life. To be truly wealthy in life means that you're, you're a wealth of information, right? You've got a wealth of understanding, wisdom, and knowledge, okay? The breadth of perspectives and the depth of information, okay? So you are watching this video Okay, because you are part of the successful and the extraordinary and the educated, right? You invest in your financial literacy and financial education so that you can make better decisions, right? And choices with your hard earned money. So if you are a career professional, chances are you have a 401k retirement account and you need to understand how this works so that you can make better decisions on your hard-earned money. You need to understand how money works and how money flows as it relates to the 401k retirement plan. So in other words, you need to understand the players in the game and what role they play. Like I said before, you need to learn how to use the 401k system and not let the system use you by learning how that game is played. Now there are three key players uh, to this game. The employer, Wall Street and the government. You see, your employer wants to give you less money, right? The less money they give their employees, the more profit they make, right? So that's just the name of capitalism. Good, bad, and different. No judgment. So instead of a pension, they give you a 401k. The government gets your 401k retirement money through taxes. And Wall Street gets your 401k retirement money through fees. Okay, so those are your three players. And you want to understand uh, what is the motivation of these three players. Okay, all right, so I want to give you a little history um, on the 401k because I, I feel like it's really important to understand the history so that we understand where we're going with this. And um, I know a lot of people take for granted that there's a 401k, but they don't understand the history or how it started. So it doesn't really help them understand where this is going or, what, or, or to make the right decisions. So let's go there, let's go into the history. So before I get into the background uh, history of the 401k, it's important that you understand that there are two types of plans uh, the defined benefit and the defined contribution. Okay, defined benefit and defined contribution. A defined benefit plan specifies exactly how much retirement income employees will get once they retire and is a fixed payment for employees at retirement. Okay, 
This is known as a pension plan that companies used to do. Um, as part of a, I am a, a part of the what the group that's known as the millennials. Okay, so my so by the time I was ready to get into the workforce, this whole concept of pension plans was really not something um, that I could leverage. It was just not a thing. But I know my parents um, and uh, people of the baby boomer generation did have, and, and you know, sometime before that as well did have something called a pension plan, right? And uh, companies used to do that a lot. Now let's talk about a defined contribution plan, okay? So now a defined contribution plan like a 401k or a Roth IRA only specifies what each party, the employer and the employee, contributes to an employee's retirement account. So I want you to understand that there was a difference here. So two rows, right? The first row was, um, that there was something called the defined benefits and that was your pension plan and then there's something called a defined contribution okay and and again the defined benefits was a, a fixed you knew what you were going to get for your retirement everything was good the defined contribution um there's a lot more to it i think if you have a 401k you know that it's a lot more complicated now, before 1978, pension plans were the retirement plan that employees um, primarily relied on, which provided um, a fixed payout for every for the employees at retirement. It's pretty clear. Pension plans were defined benefit plans. Now, in 1978, Congress passed the Revenue Act of 1978, uh, which included a provision, and there was a section, and then that section was called Section 401k. And that gave employees a tax-free way to really defer compensation from bonuses or stock options. And so 401k plans were uh, defined contribution plans. Now, um, as time went on in 1981, the IRS issued rules that allowed employees to contribute to their 401k plans through salary deductions. So, so now, a couple years later, it's starting to get more uh, fancy, <laughs> okay? And so there's more uh, stipulations, there's more opportunities to um, contribute to the 401k now through salary deductions, which really jump-started the widespread rollout of the 401k plans in the early 1980s. So now by 1983, nearly half of all large firms offered a 401k plan and companies really liked that option because it was a lot cheaper, right? A lot cheaper and more predictable uh, to fund these 401k contributions than pensions, right? Because they were, they were fixed um, after retirement, uh, whereas a 401k is while they're working is just a, a contribution. Well, see now employees were attracted to the new savings view. So, so now employees were attracted to the new savings vehicle, especially with uh, there being two bull market runs uh, in the 1980s and the 1990s, uh, which really pushed 401k accounts higher. So see, there's something that you want to keep in mind is all the different uh, factors that played into making the 401k popular. Um, I, I honestly feel like if it, if it hadn't been for these uh, bull market runs in the 80s and 90s, uh, then it, we would probably see something a little different today. So the 401k really became popular because of, of that, right? And also that stipulation, which uh, encouraged um, salary deductions. So now as we move on uh, to 1996, fast, fast forward, to 1996, now assets in the 401k plans exceeded one trillion when, with more than 30 million active participants. So this thing has ballooned, right, um, in just a, a few decades. And so you, you see the difference here. Now in 2001, fast forward again, right, to 2001, the Economic uh, Growth and Tax Relief Reconciliation Act resulted in several changes to the 401k, included in, including increasing the amount that individuals and companies can contribute to their accounts, 
Um, and as we know, these contributions change every year, right? It, it tries to at least keep up with inflation. And then they've got that stipulation uh, for people over the age of 50 to make catch up contributions. So it's really starting to grow and really beef up uh, and really take a life of its own there on the 401ks. Uh, so now, 2006, the Pension Protection Act comes up and it made it easier for companies to enroll their employees automatically in 401k plans. So definitely that's, you know, that's benef that's, that was beneficial, right? So um, that allowed for uh, employers to encourage their employees to invest. Now, fast forward to today, the 401k plans hold more than 4.8 trillion in assets and uh, pensions, right, in the private sector are increasingly rare. Very, very, very rare. Um, the, the pensions um, have really gone away for the private sector. Now, in certain areas, uh, for instance, if you're a teacher or a firefighter in certain areas of the government, yes, they have pensions. but uh, I would encourage if you are in that space and you're listening to this video, also do some due diligence and research on those because they can they are eating you alive uh, with the fees and uh, see what you end up with really. A lot of people go into these careers just thinking about the fixed retirement, just thinking about the pension. Oh, you get a pension. I'm gonna be a teacher. Oh, I get a pension, I'll be a firefighter, or things like that. And you really can't just go in there blind and just choose a career because of the pension, because of the, the fixed retirement without knowing and doing your own research and due diligence on what exactly that is going to look like. Because uh, from what I've researched so far, um, they, they're really doing um, a disservice with all the fees, the hidden fees uh, around that as well and the pensions. But this, this video is more, more so on the 401ks. Okay, so let's go back to the, uh, the history, right? So many early backers of the 401k say that the 401k wasn't designed to be a primary retirement tool since it really exposed employees to the big drops in the stock market and exposed them to the high fees of Wall Street uh, money manager. By moving from pensions to the 401k, a lot less loyalty a lot less loyalty of employers to employees and vice versa. So that uh, created that shift in, um, in that way. So the Economic Policy Institute uh, recently declared 401k uh, as a poor substitute for the defined benefit pension plans that many workers primarily relied on, which provided a fixed payout uh, for employees at retirement. In fact, the former American Society of Pension Actuaries, the head, um, Gerald Fashini, uh, once said, the great lie is that the 401k was capable of replacing the old system of pensions, but it, ha but it was oversold, okay? So what are we seeing here? The bottom line is that this group that put this thing together didn't get together to figure out how to benefit the worker and the, the employee. The lobbyists and those that put this together are either hired by the corporations to cut their budget or hired by Wall Street to increase their fees, right? So remember, think of the players and the motivation um, of, of, and why this was put together. So they really kind of pushed the employee to, to the wolves <laughs> because now it's the employee with, against Wall Street. The worker was not considered to the degree that they should have. And why is that risky? Well, because normally people don't have the time to do all the research and due diligence uh, and really understand the system, the financial system, how it's played, who are the players. They just don't take the kind of time that you do, for instance, to really understand these things. And that's why they're being fleeced, okay, and the wool is really being pulled over their sheeply heads because uh, of all of the administration fees, they're not really aware of uh, ways that they can uh, leverage, um, you know, the tax system so that they can be able to work within that system uh, to their benefit, uh, legally certainly, but see, 
The 401k was a great experiment on the baby boomer generation. The baby boomers were the first generation to have a 401k and now they're getting ready to retire. So how is this great experiment going? Well, let's look at the median 401k balance chart. At age 55 and older, the average 401k retirement account is only $70,000. That's the amount of money they have to live off of. And certainly that is not enough. People might think that they can rely on social security benefits uh, to really help them with retirement. But according to the Social Security Administration, retirement benefits are only designed to replace about 40% uh, of the average worker's wages. So what message does that give to the next generation of millennials, myself included? Well, it's important for millennials to pay attention to this clue and be smart and careful uh, about this great experiment of the 401k because it's not really turning out as great when you see the outcome right so you see the seed by you see the quality of the seed by its fruit and the fruit is the baby boomer generation because that's a generation that was uh primarily impacted by the 401k the introduction of the 401k during their working years and we see that they're really being shortchanged. they don't have enough um, and certainly is that, that a part, a great part of it is uh, all the nibbling going on, nibbling from the fees of Wall Street, nibbling from the taxes on the government and nibbling from the, uh, the employers uh, that know that they don't have to give fixed uh, retirement pensions anymore and they're just giving, um, you know, smaller contributions. So something to definitely be wary of, you know, as we think about when you plan on what company you're going to work for, you really want to take that into account is how they approach the 401k as a factor to accept or reject the offer. So let's talk about taxes. When it comes to taxes, the main question you want to ask is, uh, do I want to pay taxes now or pay taxes later when I retire and withdraw from my account? So as I was mentioning in the onset, you want to pay attention to uh, the three key players uh, when it comes to your working within the 401k system. Obviously, you're a player as well. But primarily, we talked about by giving the history, uh, I'm hoping that you got a lot clearer with the role that companies play and their motivation for moving from pensions to the 401k. Uh, now we're going to talk about the, go the uh, government. And that's the second player here, okay? And so with that, let's talk about the taxes um, because that's a motivator for them. Certainly that's how they get paid. <laughs> well, when it comes to taxes, the main question you want to ask is, do I want to pay taxes now or to pay taxes later when I retire and withdraw from my account? Now, the main factor that's really going to help you answer this question, remember, it's your money, your decision, your research. This is the question you want to ask yourself. Do I think taxes are going to be lower or higher when I retire? I'm going to wait and pause. Do I think taxes are going to be lower or higher when I retire? Right? So will you pay taxes now right, or pass it on to your future self? So that's a question that you really want to ask yourself. So, for a traditional 401k, you don't pay taxes today, but you're going to need to pay taxes in the future when you withdraw the money during retirement. Then based on today's government spending, okay, and I'm hoping this is going to help answer your question to yourself, the question you asked to yourself, based on today's government spending, do you logically think taxes are going to decrease or continue to go up? Okay. Based on the uh, deficit and how much they're just um, printing money and spending money, not just you know, in the U.S., but also abroad, internationally, uh, they're really putting us in a very precarious situation here. And so likely, there's a very high likelihood that taxes will go up. Okay. And so why would you kick the can to your future self 
and make your future self pay more taxes than you would otherwise pay today, okay? So yes, you take a hit on it today, but it's a much smaller hit now than if you wait until your future self, and by the way, that future self is not working, okay? Um, so something to really think about for your own personal situation. I'm just kind of giving you information so that you can kind of think of it in, different, in a different perspective. So if you believe taxes are going to go up, then does it make sense to defer taxes until they go higher? Does it make sense to defer taxes until the taxes go higher? Do you want to pay higher taxes on your, earning, on your earned income? And some might say, well, yeah, but I'm going to be in a different tax bracket, this, that, and the other. Sure, but here's the thing. If you, it, it really goes into having that safety and security and knowing exactly how much you can rely on. Because at least if you've paid the taxes now, you know that whatever you have invested is all yours. You, you have more control over what's in there. And when you do retire, you can factor all that in. However, if you're like most people, most people want to pay the least amount of taxes and ideally a tax-free income on retirement. This is where our Roth 401k comes in. You see, a Roth 401k is an employer-sponsored after-tax retirement account that has features of both a Roth IRA and a 401k. So like a Roth IRA, uh, contributions to a Roth 401k are made with income that's already been taxed, allowing investments to grow and be withdrawn in retirement without being taxed. So that's good because at least you have more uh, sense of control, right? You know exactly what you're working with. For those that have deferred, and I've done both, right? Because you know, I'm learning just as much as you are and I'm learning more and more every day. Um, <clears throat> so uh, years ago when I would do the 401k, I did the traditional and I have a certain amount, you know, let's say 10,000 just for the sake of this conversation. So 10,000 on the traditional uh, 401k. Well, here's the thing, upon retirement, I have no idea how much I actually have in that account because I don't know what the tax is going to be and I don't know what my tax rate is going to be. So there's so much unknowns. Whereas uh, if the $10,000 are in a Roth 401k, I've already paid the taxes on that, that no one's going to be dipping their little fingers in my little money pot, okay, um, when I'm older. And you've got to think about your future self, right? Now we've got the energy, we've got you know, we can work and all this, but our future selves, how old are they going to be? Well, they're going to be in their 70s, right? Retire at 65, let's say, 65, 70, 80, 90. Why would you hurt that person um, by making them pay higher taxes, right? On something that, you know, you've got the energy now, you've got the strength now, you've got the ability to change jobs and move around and things like that. Take the hit for that future self, if that makes sense. That's, that's the way I saw it for me personally. You might have a different um, opinion and feel free to let me know in the comment section below what you, what you think. Now let's talk about the other player uh, in this 401k system. And that is uh, Wall Street. <laughs> so Wall Street, like I said in the onset, takes their their piece or, or plays with the motivation of fees. Well, there are two types of fees that you should be aware of. One is the fees you are invested in, and two are the management fees. Now remember, 401k is an employer-provided plan where you set an amount for each paycheck and your employer can match some percentage of the contribution. So many people invest in their 401k because of the tax benefits, but for most employees, the plan administrative fees are so high that you end up losing any benefit um, because of those high fees. And this is why I stay away from funds that are actively managed and have high fees. So you're gonna to want to, when you're choosing the 401k 
uh, to invest in, you want to make sure that you're aware of um, if it's actively managed and the fees that uh, you're paying. The 401k fees fall into two basic categories, those charged by the plan provider and those charged by the mutual funds or ETFs in the account. So when you receive your 401k statement, check for the items that say total asset-based fees or uh, total operating expenses as a percentage. Uh, and also the expense ratio. So those are the three uh, keywords that you're going to want to look out for uh, in your 401k. Your 401k fees can really add up over the years. I'll give you an example. For example, let's say there are three friends, Marquita, Becky, and Kim, and each invested $100,000 in their 401k at age 35. So each account earns an annualized return of about 8%, but the accounts charge an annual fee of 1%, 2%, and 3%. So to keep it simple, again, we're talking about $100,000. We're talking that they're all uh, invested that much. They're all 35. And all of these investments have an annualized return of about 8%. So we're just keeping it all the same. The only thing that changes is that each person um, has different fee structure. Right? Marquita, for instance, paid 3% in fees and ended up with $432,194 in assets at age 65. Now, Becky, she paid 2% in fees and has $574,349 for retirement. And now, Kim paid 1% in fees and is the biggest winner with $761,225 saved for retirement. Do you see the huge disparity there? And uh, you might kind of look at it and say, oh, it's only a 1% difference. But after the years go by, you really see the huge disparity in these numbers. The key takeaway in this conversation is pay attention to those fees. Call up, that's what I did. I called up my uh, the 401k Fidelity at the time and call them up and try to understand what the breakdown is on my fees, how is it structured and really, because you know, uh, going in, I just kind of picked whatever, right? Like most people do. And then I got smart. So I want you to be smart about this. Okay, so I wanted to just kind of cover a few general things uh, on the 401k as you set this up. Remember, the contribution limit to your 401k uh, changes annually. So for example, for 2024, the contribution limit for employees who participate in 401k, 403b, and most 4, uh, 457 plans is increased to $23,000. Uh, now, if you're age 50 or older, you're eligible for an additional $7,500 in catch-up contributions, raising your employee contribution limit to about $30,500. So again, uh, every year it changes, so be aware and just look it up uh, so that you're able to uh, really take advantage uh, of that if that, that's where you choose to invest your money. There are actually two steps you need to be aware of about 401k. First, you need to uh, set up how much of your paycheck you want to funnel over into the 401k. Secondly, it's important to note that a 401k is only a container to hold your money. It's an account that holds holds the investment. So once you, once the money is in the 401k, once you identify how much of your paycheck you want to put in the 401k, you've got to take that second step, which is to choose which investments you want to put your money in. You'll be surprised how many people just set how much they want their paycheck to go into the 401k and go on their merry way, right? Work for decades and they forget to do the second piece which is once your money is in the 401k account, you've got to identify which investments you want to put the money in. You've got to allocate that money to certain investments, okay? Otherwise, it's just a savings account. And actually, if you did that or if you're doing that, you're losing money. Why? Because you might say, well, I didn't lose money. You know, I'm so scared of investing it that I just left it there. Well, if you leave it there, it's almost like you put it under your mattress. It's that bad. Because you lost money because of inflation. And inflation affects, uh, remember, we are in a fiat currency, 
So money has no value. It's not attached to gold or anything like that. There's no intrinsic, there's no value to it. It's just paper. And they keep printing it and printing it and printing it. So inflation affects this type of monetary system we're in. And so if you did that, you just put your money in the 401k and you don't take the second step of investing it anywhere, it's like you put it under the mattress because inflation just ate it all away. So if you think you did the right thing and avoided risk, you actually put yourself or you're putting yourself in higher risk um, by not investing it. So you definitely want to do your research here and know uh, for those that are doing the second step of actually investing it, um, you want to make sure that you uh, do your research and know what you're investing in. Okay, so definitely uh, do your due diligence on that and take a look into um, active uh, versus passive managed funds uh, because the fees are going to be impacting you uh, based on which way you go with that. So now, with, the other thing that you want to be aware of with the 401k is withdrawals before you're 59 and a half will, um, affect, uh, will affect you. You're going to get a 10% penalty and you have to pay income tax on the amount that you withdraw, not to mention the loss um, of all the compound interest you would have gained had you left it in the account until retirement. So it's a lose, lose, lose situation if you take your money out before you're 59 and a half, right? So definitely I've been there, done that, made the mistake, okay? So I know a lot of us, you know, uh, have crossed that road. And so, hey, if, if you've done that, just shake it off, move on. You'll be fine. You're okay. You'll be fine. You'll make it up. You know, let's just let's just keep moving forward here, okay? Let's not look to the past and, and feel bad about ourselves. Let's move forward and do the, the best thing we can um, with the information you now have available. So <clears throat> also, uh, something to keep in mind is your employer, uh, ask if your employer offers a match. So you'll want to get a company match if your employer, if your employer offers a match. Otherwise, you're gonna be leaving money on the table. So again, one good question to ask your employer is, you do offer a match and that can also be a part of the questions you ask um, to decide if this is the right employer for you. You know, the more you invest in your financial education, the more you gain confidence. And in investing, there are many different approaches and strategies to help you set yourself up for financial freedom. But it can also be overwhelming to do on your own. That's why I've designed and created my Signature Money Mastery Program. You see, traditional personal finance education tends to focus on facts and numbers and really ignores the inner work, the mindset, and the behavior, um, let alone the transformation needed to build lasting results. And you know, it's more than just creating a budget. Okay, finances is, and personal finance is much more than just creating a budget. It's really creating a lifestyle. Okay, uh, it's a lifestyle to build and keep and grow wealth. So if you're ready to invest in your financial education, this course is for you because it combines getting the full picture of personal finance and helping you to create a personalized financial action plan. Okay, and this program is curated especially for those that are ready to upgrade their mindset for wealth. It's really not for everyone. It's an exclusive experience for those high achievers that are committed to their transformation to get out of debt, save more, increase their income and invest to gain generational wealth. And this exceptional and unique program is gonna support you in having that peace of mind that comes when you have an action plan for financial freedom. So if you're ready to live a life of financial prosperity on your terms, click the link below in the description box to enroll. Also check out my Goals Mastery Program if you feel the need for more clarity in life. And you know, this course is really gonna help you get clear with what you want in life and help you to identify, define, and align to your vision, mission, and goals in life. And you see, if you don't have a clear vision, mission, or goals in your life, then you are absolutely working towards somebody else's, whether you know it or not. So it's very, very important uh, to not live your life flailing uh, like, a, like a ship at sea, because the waves are gonna toss you to and fro. What you want to do is be anchored in a vision, something that is aligned with your values. And uh, so again, if, if 
you're not clear right now with what your vision, mission, and goals are in life, I highly recommend that you start there uh, in terms of investing in yourself. And uh, you know, years gonna go, a year is gonna go by, whether you know you plan for it or not. And if you don't make a difference and make changes now and invest in yourself now, chances are this time next year you're gonna be in the same place. So if you look around and you're not liking uh, everything that you see, you've got to do something different. And I'd love to help you with that process. Also, it's always great to have inspirational and motivational reminders to keep us moving forward towards our dreams and goals. So click on the link below to choose your favorite custom design gift for yourself, family, and friends in my online merch store. Click the link in the description box below. And if you've enjoyed this video and want to improve the quality of your life, click the subscribe button, and I'll see you on the next one. Oceans of love. Till next time.